we're off to the next. And I want to call on Sil Kuriati, who is going to be our amazing next speaker. Yay, Sil. Thank you so much for being here with us, for being one of our Power Talk speakers. And the virtual floor is all yours. Good afternoon, everyone. It's such an honor to be here today speaking with so many powerful, resilient, brilliant women, women who, like me, have walked paths full of challenges, triumphs, and lessons that have shaped us into who we are today. Women who want to become better at negotiating for themselves, as Cynthia pointed out so well, I just heard that and I thought it was uh, very well said. Thank you, Eliana, Sandra, and United Latinas for having me. I, I want to start by reminding us of something very important that usually we take for granted. We all have a walk. We've gone through a lot of things, hard, painful, like painful experiences, and yet we are here, standing up strong. So let me tell you, or hopefully just remind you, your walk is incredible. It is brilliant, absolutely fascinating. But why do we keep forgetting about it? Why do we tend to think that other people's stories are better or worth telling, while ours are not? Because we are not used to talking about our walks the way we should, with pride. Most Latinas have been raised in our own collective culture of humbleness and humility, where talking about ourselves equals bragging. And can you imagine you bragging? Por favor, no, no, not me. I don't brag. And a fun fact about our brain is that in the same way it creates new synapses as we learn new things and apply those new learnings to our lives, it also deletes synapses that are never used. That is why we forget many things we learn at school as children. So not talking about yourself, about your walk, will only lead you to less talking about you, about forgetting about your walk. And because we are here under this critical topic of owning our worth, I connected it to what I daily do with my clients and ask you, do you know how to own your worth and share your unique story with confidence and pride to others? If you don't, start today. It's never ever too late. I know that talk your walk is not so simple, but it is definitely transformative. Our walks, our pasts, our experiences, and our paths are often scattered with ambiguities, moments of joy, pain, and everything in between. And while many of us have this beautiful walk, we don't always know how to talk about it. We don't always know how to use our stories to advocate for ourselves, whether it's in a job interview, a pitch, a conversation with a friend, or even, and probably what's, what happens most times is in front of the mirror, talking to yourself. We don't know how to do that properly. Here is the thing. Your story is not fragmented. Many Latinas come to me saying, well, my story is very fragmented because I, I do a lot, I've done a lot. I have, sometimes I have two jobs, I'm working on my career, but I also have this sidekick here. I take care of family, I take care of children, I take care of the elderly. Like, we, we do a lot, especially Latinas. So we tend to think our stories are fragmented, but in fact, it is a masterpiece in progress. Every ambiguity, every learning, every time you thought, I can't do this, but then somehow did it. Anyway, it's all part of your narrative. But here is what, where sometimes we get stuck. We spend so much time talking about where we've been and not enough time talking about where we're going. Yes, your past is part of your why. 
but your storytelling should ultimately be about what you're building, about the future you're stepping into. But how do we do this? Well, first, we need to let go of the idea that we are imposters. I joined the bit late, so I don't know if you talked about this already. It's something that I really am passionate about because I think that this shift of mind helps us a lot. I know many of us have heard the term imposter syndrome and have used it with ourselves, which is that creeping feeling of not being good enough, like we are frauds in our own lives. But I want to challenge that notion. Imposter syndrome is a fallacy. What really exists is the imposter phenomenon. That's the expression that, that was coined by Pauline Klantz. She never thought about syndrome. She talked about phenomena. There is a subtle yet profound difference. A syndrome suggests something is wrong with us, something inherently flawed. But a phenomenon, it's happening outside. It's happening in the the world, in the society, not in the individual. It's a matter of fixing the system and the structural discrimination, not fixing you. It's a problem that ultimately is not ours to solve. Those who created it should be fixing it, men. This little shifting language can change everything. By reframing the language, you open up a whole new spectrum of solutions. And that brings me to my final point today. It's a short power talk, uh, which is the power of word choice. Ladies, we need to be smarter about the words we use to talk about ourselves, both with others and to ourselves. If you have a business, don't you try to find the best possible words to sell it to the people? That's marketing, right? We all do that very well with our businesses. Why would you do otherwise when it comes to yourself? However, our internal dialogue, that little voice in our head, can often be our harshest critic. How many times have you caught yourself saying things like, I'm not good enough, or I don't deserve this, or, oh, who did I think I am? And then you turn around and give a friend advice that's so uplifting and so empowering, as if it comes naturally. Well, because it does, you have it in you and you give it to others, you save it to others and you do use it with yourself. Why are we so kind to others yet so cruel to ourselves? This is a reflection that I always want to remind my clients and the women surrounding me. The words we choose shape our reality. If you keep telling yourself you're an imposter, you start to believe it. So if you tell yourself you're worth it, that you're capable, that you worked hard for everything you have, well, then you start to believe that too. Your brain is smart and wants to protect you. It is easier for your brain to assimilate the language that it is used to. So if you're always harsh with yourself, whenever you hear criticism outside, your brain will pay a lot of attention to it. It will absorb it almost ignoring the compliments because compliments are a language he is not used to or your brain is not used to. So it is time to be intentional about the language we use, to start talking to ourselves like the queens we are. So how do we start? How do we begin to truly own our worth? I would say number one is talk the walk. Embrace your story. Understand your why and reflect on your journey. But remember that while your past shapes you, it doesn't define where you're going. You are allowed to change your mind. Number two, ditch the imposter syndrome. It's just a phenomenon, just a phenomenon, not a permanent condition. You are not an imposter. You deserve every wonderful thing that comes your way. And last but not least, choose your words wisely. Be intentional with how you speak to yourself. Build yourself up with the same love and respect you give to others. Ladies, you are powerful. You are enough. 
You have worked hard to get where you are and you deserve to own every single part of that journey. So today I challenge you, talk your walk, claim your worth and never ever let anyone, including that voice in your head, tell you and others a different story about yourself. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I love uh, the idea of talking our walk, because normally it's like walk your talk, but you're absolutely right. Our words are powerful and, and they help us move forward. Thank you so much, Sil. 